Hello and welcome to the conversation. This is Honest Faith Conversations and as always I am your co-host Miguel Covarrubias. And I am Kathy Covarrubias and today we're going to be talking about Marvel's Iron Fist. Should it be like Marvel's and Netflix's Iron Fist? Like a oh, sure. yeah, I guess producing Sure, we can throw in Netflix in there. I'm not sure if they want to continue being tied with this disaster of a (laughs) series. It's not a disaster. It's only just okay. And, uh, well, that's that's kind of where we're going to go with a little bit of today's conversation. But uh, uh, for those of you who have not yet watched it, uh, Iron Fist is the uh, fifth Defender and last one to be introduced before uh, Defenders comes out later this year. Yep, we already have Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, we have Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah. What's the other one? Iron Fist. That's four. Iron Fist, uh, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Daredevil. Oh, did I? I only meant four, I think. I think that's only, there's only four. <laughs> Unless they're including the Punisher in there, but I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, continue. Yes. <laughs> um, Night Nurse. There you go. She's in there. I guess, yeah, we can throw her in. We'll throw her in, yeah. Um, maybe I was just saying five, because I'm stuck on five at the moment for some reason. Uh, anyway, but there are spoilers, so uh, spoilers, uh, spoiler alert, uh, unless you're not going to watch it and you're just going to listen to us talk about it for... 45 minutes, which may actually save you some time. I was about to say, this might be one of those very few rare instances where we're like, eh, you don't necessarily need to watch it. Maybe, like, the last two episodes. The last, or the first episode and the last two episodes. Yes, if you're going to watch any of it at all. Yeah. Um, The rest of it just kind of seemed like filler, but, you know, anyway... Uh, with, uh, with that being said, the summary of this, uh, if you're unaware of, uh, Iron Fist, Iron Fist is, uh, Danny Rand, who is a, a billionaire in the Marvel Universe, uh, almost to rival the, uh, billionaire is Stark. of, uh, Stark. Um, uh, he is the head of Rand Industries, or his family was the head of Rand Industries, and mm-hmm. they all Along with in- the wards. Uh, they died, uh, the Meachams. Oh, Meachams, sorry. Uh, and uh, they died in a plane crash, and except for Danny, who was saved by monks of the Order of the uh, Crane Mother. But his mom may or may not have died. That's yes. speculation that she died. But there's a strong chance that we're actually going to see her in The Defenders. Maybe. There's, people are speculating that she's actually one of the villains. There is, yeah, speculation about that. But I'm not sure if they're going to go off with that or not because uh, they may uh, lean more heavily on their uh, their more successful uh, runs. Well, it's already it's Daredevil. already in the ru- or it's already in the works. Like they're not going to turn back now. No, I know. But I mean, like they're they're gonna they're probably gonna rely more on the. I think they're gonna be fighting the fit, the hand, but uh, we'll get into that. Um. So anyway, uh, Danny Rand comes back to New York after being at Kunlun, for, which only appears every fifteen years. Uh, and yeah, so he's he's come back from that, and uh, so he's coming back to New York and coming and back to his of, life. Yeah, and, he's kind of in a. Rested development where he, like, still, like, thinks very innocently and thinks like a 10-year-old. Like, he's very naive. Yeah. Very naive. Yeah, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. And so, uh, the first part of this episode, we want to talk about what went wrong, in our opinion, with this series. Um, primarily because we decided we were going to talk about this last week, and we've been trying to catch up and trying to watch all the episodes before we got to this, and we actually just finished the last episode, like, two minutes ago. Yes. So it's Uh, very fresh in our minds. um, So one of the things that I I want to talk about with this is that uh, the characters were were very shallow to me. Not, like, as in, like, they they had shallow personalities, but as in, like, we didn't know a lot about them, so then... There yeah. wasn't a lot of depth to their character, and uh, I mean there was there was a little bit of uh, what I'm going to start calling as half acting, 
uh, half-assed acting uh, is uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to call it half acting is there was some of that, but I, I don't think that it's all on the actors in this. Um, I think there was just some, it was, it was, I think it was hard to adapt Iron Fist to the MCU. Uh, I think. Especially because, with what's already been established. Yeah. Uh, I think they, if they had more time with Dr. Strange being there, I think if Dr. Strange had come out maybe like a year ago, that they would have had a little bit more of a chance to write in some more of the mysticism and more of the uh, uh, Eastern, Eastern philosophy, Eastern uh, mythology into mm-hmm. that. But um, I think with that just, with them just introducing um, magic into the MCU, I don't think it's going to be, you know, I think it was just a little, a little difficult to adapt him in, him and his characters into the MCU. Uh, so I, I don't think that it was just, you know, the actors in this. Well, and I was... think too that the everybody is so excited for the Defenders yeah. that this was more of a... A rush a, job? Yeah, it was definitely... It yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, oh no. It's like, like you were saying, uh, Thor, like the first Thor, was very much like, oh, we gotta, we gotta put him in here somewhere before we yeah. actually have the Avengers. So it was, yeah, it was... One of those circumstances where they just needed to put him in there, so then there was enough storyline for people to recognize him. I think. Yeah, and that brings me to my next point: is that there was too much time. They had thirteen episodes, and I think they had at most uh, six episodes worth of content, maybe yeah. eight. Uh, there were certain things in there that was just too much. Like um, there was um, certain elements of. Are certain struggles for certain characters that by the end of the series like wasn't an issue anymore, and it was kind of like, eh. Yeah, where did this go? Yeah, like why? Like what was the whole point of that? <laughs> yeah, you didn't you didn't develop this. You didn't develop you know how how it got worse. Like uh, for instance, with Ward Meacham, uh, he has. Uh, we'll talk about this later. Uh, he has uh, an addiction to painkillers and, and opioids, and it it kind of develops into this heroin thing but they don't develop that any further like it could have it, like they throw it all into like two episodes yep and they could have developed it a little bit further and a little or bit they more could have just of a gotten rid of it. yeah they could have just gotten rid of it and and it wouldn't have made a difference exactly <laughs> like it didn't it didn't add to the story it didn't really i mean i think it detracted i mean a lot of the board stuff a lot of the company stuff was a lot of detracting from the larger issue uh, of this, the entire show. And I, I, I can understand where they were trying to go with this. And I'll talk about that in here in a second, but I really think that it was just, there was just too much time. They had, yeah. they had not enough script and too much time. Um, another, another thing that was brought up and uh, I want to shout out to emergency awesome, which is a uh, YouTube channel. Uh, go check him out. But uh, he talked about this in his, his video was that there wasn't, there wasn't enough martial arts. And the thing is, there are some in here and the ones that do know it well, they, they do it beautifully. Like there is an, an instance of, uh, of a uh, drunken master Kung Fu, uh, in oh, there, yeah. which is, which he does it very well, but you can tell that, uh, him acting against, um, who's playing Danny Rand, the main character that the Danny Rand guy doesn't know. The actor doesn't know much. Like he doesn't know enough to to uh, to defend himself just in case he actually does accidentally gets hit and all this other stuff that mm-hmm. you know it's kind of it's just you know it was rushed it was poorly put together some in some bits and so there was too much time but not enough time it was not enough time to train their actors mm-hmm. for what should have been in there yeah well and honestly like how. How hard of it, or how hard was it really to find a a guy who would have been able to play the Iron Fist who knew martial arts? I mean, martial arts is not like some new like thing that just occurred. Like ever since Karate Kid, like kids everywhere have been like <laughs> wanting to join and be a part of like martial arts. So I don't understand like why didn't they just find somebody who knew. Or who had a better training in martial arts? No, well, I think they they wanted somebody who was still like not a complete unknown, but still, you know, a good, a decent actor. Which you know, it still remains to be seen if he can if he can fill that role or not. I think he was just he was given a bad 
a bad go of this. And I think that it was just a little difficult to adapt Iron Fist into the MCU uh, mm -hmm. so quickly. And uh, granted that the television television mm -hmm. isn't going to impact the movies at all, uh, as we've heard Kevin Feige sa say before. Yeah. But... Um, but still in this that, you know, it's still they're impacted by what happens in the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, their timeline is still, you know, like in between uh, the first Avengers and the second Avengers uh, movies. Um, but I think uh, I don't think they mentioned anything about uh, um, Ultron and, and Sokovia in, no, uh, um, well, in the Netflix series. In Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. they have... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is still within the same timeline of the MCU, but uh, that's a completely separate entity. I'm trying to think. I, th there, I think there might have been some mention in Jessica Jones, like at the very beginning. I believe there was some mention, but I don't think it went oh. very far. Yeah, I, I'm not sure on that either, but uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to look that up later. Uh, maybe, I think Emergency Awesome does have a video on where this fits into the timeline of the MCU. So you can go, uh, when you're checking out the video where he, he talks about what went wrong with the, the series that, uh, the season so far, that uh, um, you, you can, can check, uh, that, out check that out too if he, uh, he has a video on the uh, timeline. And check back in with us. It's a perfect opportunity for you to come back with into this conversation with us and uh, let us know uh, where it fits in. Yeah. So um, the biggest thing that I wanted to take away from this entire season um, – is is the idea of living intention, and I think this is this is a very big um, thing in faith and in every aspect of our lives that uh, you know that we that we do is we, we we're meant to live intention, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about what I mean here in just a second. But first, I want to talk about the uh, sophomoreish uh, take on duality, and I, I, yeah. I say it's sophomoreish because it seems very very high school literary work on the entire show is that everything is everything is in duality is that you have your life in Kunlun and you have your life here in New York and and they're black and white and, and everything else like this and that's that, so dark down here but it's all light up there yeah exactly <laughs> that it's but there's darkness but there's darkness here in New York and there but there is still a bit of light and it's like you, you could tell it was kind of like very cheesy. Yeah, cheesy. That somebody wanted you wanted it to mean something, wanted it to 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 have some depth, but it was like it was just not fully fleshed out enough to actually well, have you know some some real depth to it. Well, and in all actuality, like oh, never mind. Continue. Uh, it's it's very easy storytelling. <laughs> it's, it is. It's it's um, you know it's very. That's why I call it sophomoreish. Is that it's it is on some level intellectual. It is, it is sophisticated, but the way that they're going about it is very is very moronic. Is very yeah, sophomoreish. It's not. It's a, you, they don't explore where there may possibly be shades of gray. Like yeah. it's either left or right. Yeah, no it's either the hand or not kung fu. The hand or the fist. Yeah, it's the, either the hand or the fist. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, that there are no that the shades of gray in this don't exist. But the hand makes a fist. Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> kind of, I think that's where uh, um, Gal was trying to go with the whole thing. But you know, like there wouldn't be a fist if there wasn't a hand. Yeah. Uh, and I think they they. I mean, even if they wrote that for her, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have even uh, been surprised if that they included that in this. Season. Yeah, if 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 there's if that phrase is somewhere in the dialogue somewhere, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> you can't make a fist without a hand. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I think that you know, with everything in life, there are shades of gray. We're meant we're meant to be living in in between the two extremes. We're meant to be living in the in that tension of of living between those things. Because uh, as I as I wrote about this week, I wrote about pride. And that you can have, you know, too much pride and you can still have this weird pride when you don't have enough pride to ask for help. That you, It stops you from asking for help. That, you know, you, you, um, 
when you're when you're down on your luck, you're down on all this other stuff. That you still have this weird sense of pride where you where you feel like you can't ask for help. And uh, I mean, I've seen so many people struggle with this with this idea that it's an either or. And the truth is, no. That you're meant to live in a moderation. You're meant to enjoy life. You're meant to live in in the middle, in mm-hmm. this tension between the two. That it, that everything in life is this balancing act. And it's true. We all live on the edge of a knife. Is that that's it's it's not either or. It's the middle. Yeah. Well, and even like me, like personally, um, for those of you who know me, like um, I am very. I'll do it myself. Like, let me try to figure out how to do it myself. Maybe I'll ask you like for advice. I don't want your help with it though. Until like I am floundering, then that's when I'll ask for your help. But that's like my own my own pride there and uh i mean this this gets involved in many religions and uh i mean i don't even know what the the term for this is in other religions but in christianity uh they're obsessed with sin they're obsessed with the of the reason why you need help you're that uh you know like why you need christ in your life yeah exactly um, in other religions, it's it's kind of the same thing. Why you need the religion in your life? Um, when in our actuality, is that once you get past that initial part, that you are you're meant to be living in that tension of of needing it, but also of not needing it anymore. Mm-hmm. Is that you're you're meant to live in that tension of of always working on your life, is always always finding something else in your life that that needs work, that needs renewal, that needs life. And I think that, um, I think that's what plays into why they wrote Danny the way that they did, um, because Danny, Danny throughout this is is still very childlike in the, mm-hmm. throughout the entire thing, and that's they they couldn't figure out that instead of being in the shade of gray of of being a grown up, but and seeing the world as a grown up, that uh, you know you can get rid of this childishness, but still have those ideas of being a child and still. You know, live in that tension between the two of of you know wanting what your child, the child self wanted, yeah, and being an adult about it. Well, and here's okay. So here's my issue with him, like being a child, um, like, like right away, like he's he has very much his child like wonderment like going on with like the world and that kind of stuff. But yeah. his, um, I can't remember his name, the guy who follows him to Earth. Oh, uh, uh, Davos. Yes, Davos. Like, he doesn't have that. Like, he, like, he's not, like, fascinated with, like, what's going on in the world. Like, he doesn't have that, like, wonder. So, like. Yeah, but he was, he was born in Kunlun, and so. But still, like, but here's my thing. If he was born there, wouldn't it be more of a wonder to him, like, being in a different area? Yeah, more of a fish out of the fish out of water Exactly. So then, like, why does he, like, have so much maturity to him? When Danny has, like, none. Yeah. And, I mean, even if you were in this plane accident as as a child, that, you know, you watch your parents die and, and all that stuff, is that, I mean, you're still 15 years out of things. Is that mm-hmm. 15 years will grow anybody up? Yeah. Is that, I mean... There's still that... I, I know that there are people in this world who hold on to their pain and hold on to their... They're, I mean, everything else that, you know, they don't grow out of it, that they grow, that they have that, that state of arrested development, but there's still other parts in their lives where they end up growing. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where you feel like Danny's just been put in cryostasis for 15 years and his body just (laughs) kind of, yeah, he really has, he grew up. He just wakes up and he's like, oh, I guess I'm Iron Fist now. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, he has 15 years of experience in Kunlun. I mean, he's got, he's got to have grown up in something. I mean, granted he learned Kung Fu, uh, but, uh, you know. There had to have been other stuff. Like, I mean, he talks... Like, they talk about how, like, when they were younger, like, if they, when, like, the memories that they have. So, he obviously experienced things that, like, teenagers would experience. So, I just don't, I don't understand why they wrote him the way they, they did. Yeah. And, I mean, it's it's part of, part of this living in tension, I think, is, is realizing that, that we live in tension. And realizing that almost everything in the world, everything in our lives is gray is that is a shade of gray and that 
I think that it really it frees our own chi <laughs> mm-hmm. to use oh, come uh, my chi. My chi. <laughs> Sorry, uh, the inside joke. I apologize. Our own our own chi, our own spirit to our own life energy to realize that mm-hmm. is that it doesn't have to be black and white. That the that the whole of life, the whole of everything, doesn't have to be black and white. That we can live in shades of gray. Is that human beings were very adaptable creatures. Is that we've learned how to adapt and to live in certain areas. Well, like, look at Colleen, for example. Like, if anybody's a great character, like, she might be it. Because she, um, yes, spoiler alert, she's part of the hand. However, like, she's like, but I'm part of the group that, like, is trying to make things better. Like, I'm, like, even though the hand has a bad reputation, I'm part of the more good part of the bad which you, you know, know what I mean? They so don't end up being good anyway, but you no, know. no. But she she tries to she tries to play it to where like, oh yeah, I understand the hand has a bad reputation, but I'm more on the light side of the hand, so I'm more in the gray part. Yeah, and the thing is, and I think this is, I think this fits more with uh, um, with Claire with Claire Temple's character was that she was already developed to be that you know complex character. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the very first instance in Daredevil that she she was introduced uh, in Daredevil as a very complex character as living in attention yep. of of fixing up Daredevil, uh, but you know Daredevil going through this whole struggle of of not wanting to live with what he does and mm-hmm. still having to do what he does kind of thing is that he that they she was introduced in a very gray you know context yeah and this one in iron fist iron fist is very black and white a very duality kind of thing is that it's an either or kind of thing Mm -hmm. when you keep saying but yeah and but and but and throughout this entire thing it is a very but and thing that i think that you said thing a lot so yeah no i i mean that this that life and, uh. and that's why I think that it doesn't fit into the MCU very well because Iron Fist can tend to be very black and white, um, and the MCU has been has been grounded this entire time. This yeah. is this is why the MCU has worked is because I've been trying to do very grounded, yeah, uh, relatable characters, relatable like, characters. Almost well, besides Thor, obviously, because he's you know a god. But uh, yeah. most of the <laughs> most of the other characters, like they. Most of them started out like any other human starts out. They were born. They didn't have anything special about them. Like, maybe some of them had money, but that's pretty much the extent of, like, how special they were. And throughout the course of their lives, their their powers or abilities, like, grew out of themselves. Yeah. Um, and I don't know where I was going with that. I, it's Something you said triggered that thought, but... but. And and I think that this is oh being grounded, being grounded, yeah. and so we have like something in common with them, and uh, I don't think too many people would have something in common with Danny. Yeah, with Danny or with uh, the Meachams or no. If any, like we may have something. I may you may have something in common with Colleen because yeah. some people like there's people out there who have joined certain organizations whatever that organization may be, religious or not, who then realize, like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was. <laughs> and yeah. then turn themselves around. Like, that is something that can be relatable to some people. Um, like, Jessica Jones, too, is another character that can be relatable to some people. Like, she has these powers, super strength, and but she also, like, struggles with drinking. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, she was abused by, yeah. um, uh, what is his name? Uh, the Purple Man. Yeah, the Purple Man. That's what I keep wanting to call him, but... Uh, I know he has a name. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. But she she was, like, emotionally abused by this man. Like, and that is something that is very relatable to many people out there who have been in abusive relationships where, essentially, like, they were gaslighted. I think that's what the term is called. Yeah. Well, and with uh, the Purple Man's ability to just, you know, tell you what to do and mm-hmm. do it is, it was just, yeah. I mean, he was, he by far has been the most terrifying Marvel villain. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> and I think that that's a huge credit to David Tennant because you know David Tennant's just incredible actor. Um, but uh, yeah, and the the thing about Iron Fist is that none of the none of the villains were even like that terrifying. There was nothing mm-hmm. at stake. No. Um, and Danny. I mean, they they try to do some of the saving the cat moments with Danny, but uh, I mean, it was it was too few and far between. It was like, yeah, talking with the uh, the homeless guy and being his friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it st- still seemed a little bit joint uh, jilted, and there was that that moment where he said, "We're gonna make you know, we're gonna make this uh, drug available. You know, we're gonna sell it at a cost." And it just, I just think that the. I don't think it was enough of a saving the cat moment. No, no, like I didn't feel like I don't I don't I didn't feel like any of his good deeds to make you feel for him like was good good enough. Yeah. You know like which which made him rather shallow. Mhm. Um let's see. Oh, and uh I mean the biggest I think the biggest believable part of this entire uh, series uh, season uh, is was the stepping between worlds and I think that I mean you saw this a little bit uh, in the characterization of, of Danny Rand and of the Iron Fist was that of uh, was that little bit fish out of water kind of thing mm-hmm. but uh, you know stepping between uh, the reality of Kunlun and uh, New York is that it is it is very disorienting to to step between worlds and I, I was just realizing this the other day is that um, I used to work for a church and now I don't work for a church anymore I work for a, a corporate entity and and you know I was realizing some of the things that that I will never I will never get to do again I will never get to you know have or lead these spiritual retreats where people you know discover something beautiful inside of themselves I will never get to you know teach somebody uh you know the spirituality that God loves them. That you know that there is a divine out there, a divine being that that cares for them, and there is nothing they can do to earn that. There's nothing they can do to lose that. I mean, that's and I felt kind of sad about that because you know I enjoyed doing that. It was it was it was beautiful. It was those moments, and not to discount them at all, because you know I'm still going to hold on to those as as moments that that. I will cherish for the rest of my life, but knowing that I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a part of the, doing that anymore. Well, granted, I can still volunteer and and help people in my own way, but uh, and even this, maybe you know, it helps somebody somehow, somewhere uh, is listening to our podcast and you know is like, hey, I had a spiritual awakening by listening to your podcast on Iron. Fist. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen with this episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, that stepping between worlds is that you know we live in that tension between you know the spiritual and the physical. Is that we're both spiritual and physical beings, and we're meant to live in the tension between the two. We're meant to live in between, mm-hmm. and not you know either or. Which kind of goes into the realm of Doctor Strange because he lives, he does live in that between. The key is one of those few beings in the Marvel Universe who can walk freely between. Yeah, the, the spiritual and the, uh, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm like, okay, the defenders, defenders need uh, some Doctor Strange help in, in this in this uh, series that's coming up, because you know he's uh, living in between both of those realms, the magic realm and the uh, physical realm. My, who? and he's involved in the comics. That is so true. he's. I mean. They, by the way, here's a spoiler alert if you have not read the comics on the Defenders. But la, 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 la. I'm just kidding. Um, Go ahead. The uh, Defenders' main base is uh, is is the Sanctum, mm-hmm. is Bleecker Street. Uh, so um, they he's a part of the Defenders in uh, the comic books. So well, in the but he's also part of the whole larger. Marvel Universe, so... Yeah, but he's not... I mean, he's not really a part of anybody's team. He's more like the, hey, what should we do about this? And then he's like, oh, this is what you should try. And they're like, okay, bye, thanks. <laughs> like, <laughs> Or, can you open a portal for us? And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> he's like, sure, guys, whatever you need. Yeah, like, that's what happens in the whole... Inf- oh, here, spoiler. I don't know if it's going to happen in the movie or not, but uh, the whole mm-hmm. Infinity... Uh, 
stone issue is that uh, he opens the portal to go and fight uh, Thanos. Well, and I think it's going to be more since he has yeah, the infin- Infinity Stones. Exactly. I think it's going to be stolen from him first. But uh, we'll we'll see what happens when, in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and what happens in Thor Ragnarok. And then we'll see where they're going to go with all this. But Yes. Uh, anyway, that's the much larger MCU. That's the uh, the uh, god level MCU, whereas this is the more street level that we're talking about uh-huh. here. So, um, yeah, we're meant to be living in a gray world. We're meant to be living in in the gray reality. The tension between the two extremes. Um, anyway, I like to get your all thought your thoughts on that. Y'all's thoughts on that. Oh, jeez. Um, Can you tell where he's from? <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know. Join our conversation when I when I say that a little bit later on. What I mean is that give your thoughts on this. Let us know. Yeah, like you, you know, can you can find either of us on Twitter. You can find Honest Faith on Twitter. Like seriously, like even though I don't have much of a Twitter presence, if you tweet at me, chances are I will tweet back like relatively quickly. Because yeah, because I don't have a lot of a Twitter presence. <laughs> Yeah, um, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, so we want to open up the uh, controversial issue segment, even though we have some, said some things already that may be con- controversial to some people. Um, the very first one I want to talk about here is I found it a little odd that uh, they dealt with the opioid epidemic uh, here in the Iron Fist when it's just started to become like really overwhelmingly bad. And I like, think are you that, talking about in real life? It's over. Like, yeah, 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 in real life, where it's overwhelmingly bad, and they didn't give it justice. They didn't give mm-hmm. it, you know, its due. It to say, you know, if you if you're dealing with an opioid addiction, you know, you need to go seek help. And I granted, they started this whole thing in, the, in Daredevil, where you know the uh, the hand was was dealing with uh, bringing in the synthetic heroin and all this other stuff. But I mean, you had an actual character dealing with the opioid addiction here in this show mm-hmm. that that he, he doesn't he doesn't go and get help he just gets this magical cure from the hand yeah yeah they're like oh we'll just give you this you're good like what that's and, not that's, yeah mm-mm. no and if anybody i mean we we lived in a, a place at one point in time in our lives where like it was it was bad before it was bad in the rest of the country like there were um, drug raids all the time. Mm-hmm. Like there was like certain houses that everybody knew were were just not good places to go for you know yeah. law abiding citizens like us. But um, oh, we could tell you stories <laughs> about that one too. Uh, that city. I mean, it was still it's, it's a great city, city to, it's a to town. live in. Yeah. It's small, and that's the thing. Like. Like the heroin and the opioid like um, problem is in this is more in the small towns, and the problem is with small towns is because they're so small, like people don't want to go seek help because they are afraid of the rumors that are going to be spread about them, uh-huh. and that's I'm I I even grew up in a family where there were certain things that happened with certain people in our family that we didn't like we didn't like talk about it like. I still have family members that refuse to acknowledge that they need to seek help. And it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's tough for those of us who like want them to seek help yeah. and they, they, they well, won't. And it's not just with, with opioid addiction. And, and this is something else that they, they dealt with was the, uh, the mental hospital, which I think they didn't, they didn't do enough in that is that. No. That, like I talked about in the Doctor Strange episode, uh, is that if you are having problems, if you're having issues, don't be afraid to seek help. It's okay to go to therapy. It's okay. And that's that's another thing about this is that talk therapy is not just about talking to somebody. It's not mm-hmm. just about laying it all out there and making yourself feel better. No, in fact, these people are trained to help you, to, trained to give you tools to be able to deal with the issues in your own life. Mm-hmm. They're not there to just listen to you and write their own notes down and give you meds. No, they're there to give you tools to help you. Yeah. I say this from experience because I've been going to therapy for almost a year now. Mm-hmm. Is that, you know, it's not it's not something that that should be looked down upon. It's not something that you should 
treat with disdain because it's it's it that it only should help certain people. No, almost everybody, almost everybody. If you are living, if you are breathing, if you are listening to this, you can benefit from a few hours of therapy. Yeah, you can benefit from but going it, to see somebody. It is up to it is up to them though to actually take the tools and take the suggestions that the therapist has made and actually implement it because. Yeah. There's, there's certain personalities out there who are just going to be like, no, I'm not going to do what you say. I'm just going to continue to do what I'm going to do. Exactly. I mean, you've, you've got to, yeah, you've got to, you got to give in to it a little bit. You got to submit to it a little bit. Yeah, even if you think it's silly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, we're just going to bring up one more controversial issue because we're running out of time here. But uh, uh, brand loyalties is that uh, I know that there are a few people that are. It's controversial that we're like we're we're harping on a Marvel property and you know you're just well okay i am i love marvel like okay even though iron fist was not good it was still better than batman versus superman well i never well it's not it's not not good it's just okay like um toy story 2 was only okay that you know it's 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 entertaining. It, it'll it'll keep it'll give you some entertainment for a few hours. But if you're expecting like Daredevil level, you know, quality, it's not going to have that. No, no, um, and it doesn't even have like I know some people um, were kind of bored with um, with Luke Cage, but at least Luke Cage had. People were bored with Luke Cage. Yeah, it was no, so good. I know. I talked. To, I talked to a few people who were like, "Oh, really? You liked it?" And I was like, "Yes." Like. Like, yeah, there were some, like, slower parts, but, like, the visuals were outstanding. Like, the oh, my visuals, gosh. The visuals, the music, it was all put together very well. It was, a, mm-hmm. it was a work of art. It was a work of art. And, I don't know, maybe it's just because that I, myself, am an artist, so I can see that and appreciate it. And whereas, you know, maybe they just like to go watch movies and television just for the action sequences, maybe. But, yeah. Um, anyway, I found the value in it, so... Okay, so laying that out there. That's the controversial issue: is that um, that I think that just because something comes out from a brand does not mean it's good. Yeah, Apple. Yeah. uh, What? Yeah, that's a controversial (laughs) issue. We're not going to touch on Apple, but no, that's uh, all I'm going to say because we're going to probably lose a lot of listeners if I delve more into that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, moving on. Because there's also a thing called not. I mean, there's brand loyalty, but then there's the opposite side where there's people who will not touch a brand. Yeah. Like, they'll do anything in their power to avoid said brand. Yeah. Anti-brand loyalty? Anti, yeah, sure. Loyalty to not to that brand? <laughs> um, so, uh, anyway, in closing here, we want to tell you a little bit that March is Tripod Month. And we still have um, a few days left of March. And I know that uh, this week we were not very good about posting that on our Facebook page and that's that's only because I started work this week. Yay! Yay! So I am uh, I am gainfully employed now so that's good. Yay! Um, so uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to listen to uh, podcasts and so or at least not yet. In a few mm-hmm. months, I'm sure that I, I may have enough uh, ability to do so. But um, just wanted to let you know that, uh, do you know that 40% of Americans have no idea what a podcast is? Mm-hmm. And uh, Tripod Month is all about trying to change that. So if you know somebody that has no idea what tri- what podcasts are, let them know. Say, yes. hey, um, have you heard about this wonderful thing called podcasts? And you can find almost anything a podcast show about you anything can, yes you can find a podcast about fishing you can find a podcast about history you can find a podcast about hairstyles like there's a podcast out there for everyone and i mean everyone i mean look at us we're we're definitely a niche podcast we're we're a podcast talking about religion in uh, pop culture that's that's definitely a uh uh, a niche podcast, but yes. uh, um, you know, if you're listening to this and you know somebody who doesn't know any any podcasts, show them how to get it. Yeah, like download apps for them so they can listen. Exactly. A lot of people and, think uh, that you have to pay for podcasts, which is obviously not the case. Even on iTunes, iTunes they're free. Uh, mm-hmm. You just subscribe to a podcast. There are some that that charge, and I, I have no idea why, but uh, 
but there are a lot of great shows that are they're just free uh they get paid through the advertisements um we have no advertisements yet if any of you want to advertise our show that'd be great but uh you don't have to you don't have to um but uh you know and let us know that you did that and have them tell us that you did that and be like hey i heard about your podcast from my friend so and so and you know, use the ha- use the hashtag tripod to let everybody in the, in yes, the podcast and will, community. And um, if no. you would let us, we we'll, we will give you a shout out next week if you suggested it to somebody, suggested us to somebody. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be us; you can be somebody else. But yes. you can say, uh, "Honest Faith Conversations gave me the idea to to reach out to somebody." Yep. To uh, um, evangelize this thing called podcasts. Yes. Oh, and um, I was actually thinking about this. So um, next week, um, we are, there's a certain somebody's birthday. Um, He happens to be the shorter of the three of us in the family. Yes. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, But that is next week. So we will try our darndest to get a podcast out on Sunday like we typically do. Um, I just want to throw out there that it, Maybe until Monday. Or it may be like, yeah, it may be until Monday when he's asleep. So um, with that being said, you can find us elsewhere on Facebook, on Twitter, on Tumblr. Oh, let's see. Where else are we? uh, I'm on Reddit. Um, You can also email us at Mm honestfaithconvos at gmail.com. Go to the website. You can go to the website, thehonestfaith.com. By the way, those are where my writings are. My blog is at there. Um, which if you may have seen some of it on Facebook, I got, I've been shared a few times this last couple of weeks. I, I'm so very thankful about that. Um, and that's awesome. Go find us there. Come join the conversation. So with that being said, I invite you to be a part of our conversation. Join our conversation. Bye. Bye.